Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you there is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have Have mercy mercy on on us. We We confess confess that that we we have have turned turned away from from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from from love love for for all people. people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Please read responsively Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep watch for the morning, more than those who keep watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, with the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord God shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The second reading is from Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Fifth Sunday in Lent. The gospel for today is from the gospel according to John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. 
After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us go also, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who have opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. A reading from God's Word. Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the preaching of God's word. Let us say Amen. You don't have to be dead to have a Lazarus problem. So we may think, wouldn't it be special if we could call on Jesus, as Mary and Martha did, to come and bring someone we loved back to life? I think of my own parents 
who lived until I was well into my adult years, and who I spoke with a lot. And yet, there are still questions I wish I could ask them, or things in my life that I would love to share. Or other times, when we may think that we ourselves are trapped in a cave somehow in our life, almost buried alive, perhaps. Something like an unhealthy relationship, addiction, depression, even unpleasant neighbors, and we are stuck behind that stone, stuck in a hole. The Lazarus story is vividly illustrated in a movie that I actually have not seen, but I hope it's easy to picture as I share it with you. The movie is The Last Temptation of Christ. The cave is pictured as a hole in a cliff, as it may well have been. We know about caves in Missouri because this is the cave state, and they aren't always like the Bible paintings from Sunday school. The stone is rolled away by the bystanders, the community, and then a hand shoots up out of the hole. It's an ugly hand, white like a grub. And watching the movie, you are very sure that the whole body is going to pop out next because you can see the energy in the trembling hand. And Jesus grabs that hand, and suddenly a tug of war starts. Jesus strains to pull the hand and the rest of Lazarus out of the cave, but the hand pulls Jesus right back, back and forth, back and forth. Will Jesus be pulled down to that place of stink and death? Or will this ugly, withered hand come out attached to a body, a person that is even more ugly and withered and dead? So the power in the story is that we, or someone we cherish, may have a Lazarus problem. One doesn't have to be dead to have this problem. It may be us in the hole, hearing words of Jesus come out. Jesus may be reaching out to grasp our hand. Or we may be outside grasping the hand of someone else. But the power that pulls us back into our own holes, our own death, giving our own death-giving patterns or habits our life, that power can be pretty strong. The power and the power of death over others' lives can pull us into the hole. The good news, the comfort for us today and always, is that the power of life has the victory in the life of Lazarus. But there is still a problem. That he stinks? No. The problem is that he is still in prison. He is still bound. He is wrapped in his burial claws. His face is wrapped. His hands and feet are bound. He cannot see. He cannot touch. He cannot walk. He can only stumble around. He can't go anywhere. And then what? Jesus called for help. The community was asked to unbind him and let him go. The community, the same people who had rolled away the stone. We too can find ourselves bound by so many things, by worry nowadays, by panic even, by addiction, by fear of debt or actual de debt by lack of education, by depression, we too may also see others like Lazarus stumbling, blind, bound. And the power of this story today has two parts. Number one, the voice of Jesus calling to us, to us and to anyone in a dark hole of death, come out of being trapped in that, in panic. Come out of being trapped in depression. Come out of being trapped in discouragement. Come out. And the second part is the partnership with 
community. The community that rolled away the stone then also is called on to unbind those who are out so that we can walk in light and life. At this time, at the end of March, in the year 2020, this is a powerful story for us. We can say, and we do say, this too shall pass. We can say, and we do say, we never know the day or the hour, but it will pass. We will all come out of our caves, as it were. We will, and we probably won't stink. But we will still be bound, I believe, by many possibly different things, because after all, we are many different people. We may still be bound by memories of fear, of loneliness, of how isolated we were. We may be bound by a sense of powerlessness about health and about our very life. Who knows what news we'll say tomorrow and will be tomorrow and where we can or can't go, what will be allowed, what will be forbidden. We may be bound perhaps by hurt from those who slighted or forgot us as we all went through this global health crisis. We may too be bound. So this is not a take home because you are probably already at home watching this. This is rather a take with in two parts. Number one, when we are in a cave, when we are stuck in death-giving circumstances, Jesus calls to us, come out. And sometimes we will need to be the voice of Jesus calling to others, come out. Second, when we have emerged, as a world, as a nation, as a state, as a community, as a church, when things are off pause, when we have come back to life, we may still be bound. We may see others who are still bound, and we, the community of Messiah, will have lots to do to obey Jesus' command unbind him and let him go. It's going to be okay, and we are going to be part of it.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by his Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, you love the world you have made, and you grieve when creation suffers. Restore polluted lands and waterways. Heal areas of the world ravaged by storms, floods, wildflowers, wildfires, droughts, and other natural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you weep with those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle, and keep us faithful in prayer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our peace and our strength, we pray for our nation and world as we face new uncertainties around this pandemic. Protect the most vulnerable among us, especially all who are currently sick or in isolation. Grant wisdom, patience, and clarity to healthcare workers, especially as their work caring for others puts them at a great risk. Guide us as we consider how best to prepare and respond in our families, congregations, workplaces, and communities. Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, trusting that you abide with us always. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember all those who have died and trust that in you they will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live with you forever. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, Hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those, those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from, from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Amen. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome, welcome all, all to worship, worship make, make disciples, disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.